Welcome to Michelle's Making. Are you ready for coffee, crafts, cooking, and cocktails? Let's get going. Welcome and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate it. I do appreciate those of you who have subscribed, given me a thumbs up and shared with family and friends. All of those things help the channel grow and I really do appreciate it. Today is National Fluffernutter Day and Pierogi Day. So maybe those are some things you might get, like to give a try today. Also, I've got to give a shout out. We've had a few birthdays this week. My daughter-in-law, Jennifer, had a very happy birthday and that was great. And also on that same day, my little niece, Brinley, celebrated her birthday. And also my other lovely little niece, Joe, or Kennedy, Kennedy Joe, Jojo as we call her, enjoyed her birthday. So everyone's getting older, <laughs> including me. I've enjoyed already pumpkin spice in my coffee. I'm ready to make it a great day, so let's get going. We're gonna make some yummy drop style butter biscuits. These are actually called butter swim biscuits and I'll link the recipe in the description box. It calls for all purpose flour, buttermilk, butter, baking powder, sugar, and salt. I didn't have any buttermilk on hand, but I had read that you can substitute sour cream. So I'm going to substitute sour cream in this recipe. But you add your dry ingredients together, your baking powder, salt, sugar, and flour. And remember, if you don't have a sifter, just stir it with a fork so that everything gets dispersed evenly. Next, you mix in your sour cream or buttermilk if you have it on hand. You can make buttermilk with regular milk and lemon juice, but I decided to try it with the sour cream since I had it on hand. The recipe states that it will be very moist and I didn't think it was moist enough so I added regular milk just till I got a very moist dough. While your oven is preheating to 450 degrees, you place your butter in the pan that you're using and set it in the oven so that the butter will melt. My larger baking dish was being used, so I used two smaller um, baking dishes that I had. The, it's going to yield about nine biscuits, so whatever you need in the way of a pan for that um, size, you know, to make your biscuits of the right size. And my biscuits were of a generous portion. I did most of the dough into this um, larger pan well, not very large, but larger than the other one. And I cut that into six pieces. And then the other pan I cut into four pieces. Ideally, a nine inch by nine inch baking dish would be perfect. You wanna spread the dough all the way to the edge of the pan. And you can see why they call it swimming in butter biscuits because when you're done spreading the dough, it is definitely swimming in butter. You actually cut these biscuits before you put them in the oven to bake. So you portion them out. Like I said, I cut them to six pieces and four pieces in the small pan. And you'll bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes. And you can see the butter is just bubbling there. These were so light and fluffy and yummy. I topped mine with some huckleberry jam and they were delicious, drop style butter biscuits. Our first craft today is a metal pumpkin votive. And I picked up this metal trim or ribbon, whatever you wanna call it, at Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. And I cut strips. Initially, I thought I would use six strips, but you can see later on, or actually three strips, six sides as you fold it up um, but later on I did add a fourth one. I marked the center so that I knew where to overlap them on the bottom and once I had done that I began gluing them together. I 
I did clamp these with my handy dandy little pink clamps from Dollar Tree. metal on metal might take a little longer for this Gorilla Glue to dry um, because I, I did fight with it a little. It came unglued and I glued it back, but I did manage to get it all glued together and clamped and let it sit overnight and that was fine. made a little curly Q stem for the top out of a piece of the metal and glued that on also to dry. Since I knew it was going to take a while to dry, I thought I better do it today before I let it dry overnight. Using the inside of a canning jar lid, I glued it to the middle of the inside of the pumpkin to have a place for my votive light to sit. Next, using my adhesive spray, I gave a light spray of the adhesive and sprinkled cinnamon on it to give it a kind of a rustic-y or a, I don't know, rusted type appearance. heavier in some areas and lighter in others, um, but you do what pleases you. Don't forget to shake off all the extra cinnamon, but that's all there was to this pumpkin votive. The next thing I'm working on is a shabby chic trunk makeover. This is an, uh, an old trunk, like a box actually. It's, it's very light, thin wood. Um, it has a paper coating over it that I had already. It just didn't fit my decor anymore. So I decided I was going to paint it, but I thought it might be better if I take off this paper uh, coating that was on it because it was already starting to come loose in a couple of areas. So using my handy dandy heat gun to heat up the adhesive and remove the paper, I started working on it. This was a very long and tedious project. And in retrospect, I look back and I think I probably could have just painted right over the paper and it wouldn't have mattered because some of the adhesive and some of the very small paper scraps didn't come off even though I sanded it down. And when I painted it, it didn't really seem to matter. It was a little rustic-y looking anyway, and that's what I was going for. So I think I could have done this all right over the paper. But regardless, I worked and worked to get the paper off. I sanded everything down and you gave it a good wipe with some tack cloth just to get rid of the, the dust and the debris that was left behind. And I used some chalk paint from Folk Art uh, in this really pretty blue. I painted the entire trunk in this color and I did not do the sides because they were a strip of um, like tooled leather on the edge there and I wanted that to show because it was really very pretty. Using my antique wax paint, I gave it a light distressing. Then I reattached all the hardware. I do apologize for the filming on this because the trunk was kind of a, a pretty good sized little trunk. And uh, where I'm set up to film, it was really close to the camera and I just couldn't get the whole thing in even if I did a wide angle lens shoot on it. It just didn't seem to want to work right. So I do apologize for that. But you can see here I was attaching the hardware. Mm -hmm. 
I'd love to hear about things that you've made over to suit a change in your decor. Let me know in the comments. There's a great site called thegraphicsfairy.com that has free printables and they have all kinds of printables but what I was looking for was something French provincial, kind of antique-y looking so I did find some and printed it out on tissue paper. Now you can see here I attached the tissue paper to a piece of cardstock so it would feed through my printer but I have just a regular printer, nothing fancy at all and printed it onto the tissue paper and then cut it out and I trimmed around pretty close to the edge of the um, printed material just because I wanted it to look like it was embossed onto the um, trunk and you really with tissue paper cannot see the edges of it so it really came out looking quite like I wanted it to. But I trimmed around and I left it on the cardstock for the trimming purposes because it was a little easier to handle. But I did this to all the pieces. And what I ended up doing was um, choosing one piece for each of the sides, the front, the back, and the top. You give the surface a light coat of Mod Podge and then center your transfer or your decal. I'm not sure really what it's called on this tissue paper, but you center it where you want it. Be very careful because it's tricky. Once it's down, once it gets wet, you, you cannot reposition it without tearing it. Um, so I ended up uh, putting it onto the Mod Podge and then brushing over it with a very light coat. And you can see here I got a wrinkle in it and I tried to reposition it but very quickly I realized that wasn't gonna work, so I just kind of went down over the wrinkle, and it actually looked fine. It gave it a little aged type look, and I, I really liked the way that looked anyway, so I didn't need to reposition it. Here, I tried to give you a, a shot of each of the sides so you can see where I had attached it. And once the Mod Podge dried completely, it gives it a really nice matte finish. But there you have it, my shabby chic trunk makeover, and I absolutely love it. Time for that adult beverage now, a blue grapefruit martini for me today. For this martini, you build it over ice and show your glass. I used red grapefruit vodka, blue curacao, and a couple of ounces of the Jose Cuervo ready to drink light margarita mix. Everything goes in the shaker. I'll put the recipe in the description box. Let me know in the comments what drink is your favorite drink. Shake, shake, shake until it's well chilled. Poured into your chilled martini glass, and the only thing left is to enjoy our blue grapefruit martini. Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee. Make it a great week, and I'll see you next Friday.